Now that you have a basic understanding of the strategic plan, specifically the three priorities of effective fund execution, acquiring emerging missions, and force structure, it's time to talk about what this means to us. As you probably know, the Ohio National Guard is comprised of a number of entities such as the Air Guard, the USPFO, and the Quartermaster General. The Ohio Army National Guard is without question the largest and most complex component. Therefore, understanding the actions required of us in order to bring the strategic plan to life is critical. To that end, I've boiled those actions down into a list I call the ATAG Strategic Imperatives. When we accomplish these imperatives, we enable the Adjutant General and her senior team to accomplish her strategic priorities. I've asked some of our senior leaders to explain each of these five imperatives to you. The first imperative is to generate ready units. This is the product that we produce. This is what we provide to the state and the nation. When called, we respond with ready units. Our primary means to measure readiness is the unit status report, commonly referred to as the USO. This is the readiness grade card, and you play a part in this. At the company level, you are the basic building block of readiness. You are tasked to provide filled, trained, and equipped companies. At the battalion level, we provide prepared companies ready to respond at a moment's notice. At the brigade level, we provide strong battalions, trained, equipped, and ready when called. We provide units that are flexible, agile, and capable. The in-state, units at all levels, ready to go and address overseas contingency operations, national missions, and state and community missions. Our task is to be ready at all times to serve the citizens of this state and this great nation. When called, we respond with ready units. Our second imperative is implement ARFRGEN, the Army Force Generation Model. ARFRGEN is the model for building progressive readiness in our units over a five-year period. In essence, the culmination point of ARFRGEN is year five or the available year. During that year, units will either deploy or sustain a high state of readiness. After that available year, units move into reset with a focus on individual training and proficiency. The five-year cycle begins again with reset and builds towards the next available year. We measure ARFGEN by establishing USR aim points for each year of the cycle. ARFGEN is important because we need to make sure we're not buying more readiness than our nation absolutely needs. At the highest levels of the Ohio National Guard, this imperative means that we are providing the necessary funding and resources to the right unit at the right time. At the company level, this means understanding where you're at in the Arfagen cycle. Commanders need to make sure training plans and schedules are developed in a manner to ensure they are meeting the required aim points. Our third imperative is optimize resources. By this we mean that we must accomplish maximum outcome with resources that are provided. We define resources as dollars, time, facilities, and human capital. We measure optimization of resources by looking at dollars and time saved, utilization rates such as ammunition, buses, utility expenditures, and other measurable variables. This imperative is important because in times of dwindling resources and government financial constraints, we must maximize every available dollar. The highest levels of the Ohio National Guard, this imperative means we must be great stewards of taxpayer dollars and focus on our priorities of soldier and unit readiness. At the company level, this means you must do everything you can to be prepared to fight tonight, specifically your personal readiness. Every soldier, NCO, and officer must treat our precious resources as if they are their own. Our fourth imperative is enhance culture and character. This imperative refers to how well we adhere to the sound personal, organization, and Army values as well as establishing and maintaining mutual trust and respect within our organizations. We measure this by monitoring numbers and types of incidents, such as disciplinary actions, EO and EEO complaints, complaints of sexual harassment and assault, IG complaints, 
and complaints to elected officials. This imperative is important because externally, as citizen soldiers, we're not only members of our community, but represent all members of the armed forces and the collective pledge to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the liberties it upholds. Internally, this imperative is important because it represents the foundation that ready units are built upon. At the highest levels of the Ohio National Guard, this imperative means we must understand and promote cultural diversity, inclusion, and equal opportunity for all soldiers. We must also provide resources and training to commanders at all levels so that they have the tools necessary to foster an engaged workforce. At the company level, this means we must develop pride in our units. This begins with trust and respect and is based on upholding standards and values and ultimately extends to a deep-seated culture of excellence and a unit that is ready to fight tonight. Our strategic imperative number five is be prepared to respond to domestic operations. So ask yourself, what, what does this mean? Uh, responding to domestic operations is, uh, in effect, being prepared to respond to civil authorities uh, to help them meet the challenges of, uh, be it a natural disaster, man-made disaster, or there are other events that we may help uh, civil authorities be prepared for. Uh, a lot of those happen at the national level. Could be a presidential inauguration, could be a G8 summit, um, could be a World Series held in Ohio. Uh, so we do uh, prepare to respond and assist our civil authorities uh, with those kinds of operations. And we work very closely alongside our sister agencies, be they local, state, or federal, in planning for and preparing for and responding to and recovering from these kinds of uh, problem sets. And I would say the measure of preparedness for domestic operations is really how prepared are you as an individual? Um, are you emotionally ready? Are you physically ready? Uh, medi medically ready? And you know our success is going to be measured by how quickly and how well we can respond to that situation. Because these situations are anytime, anywhere, no notice, so we really need you to be prepared uh, in that way. So at the company level, you company commanders, platoon leaders, first sergeants, platoon sergeants, might want to think about if that no notice call came to me in my unit, how might I respond if that call came? So I would offer that one of these days you might want to sit around, if you haven't already, and I'm sure a lot of you have, but you might want to just uh, take some time to sit around and say, hey, if that call came in tonight, are our alert rosters up to date? Does everyone uh, keep their um, phone number up to date, their email address up to date? Could we reach out and call our people in and get them in here quickly if we needed to? How would we assemble our unit, our equipment, and get it ready uh, should that call ever come? Of course, the imperatives refer to our actions as an organization. It's equally critical that each of our actions as individuals also contribute to the overall accomplishment of our strategic goals. How do I do that, you ask? It's easy. Every one of us needs to ensure we personally maintain the highest possible state of readiness. Command Sergeant Major Jones will elaborate on what that means. We've all heard about the Fight Tonight concept. Fight Tonight is being ready to assemble, mobilize, and deploy on short notice, sometimes as short as 24 hours, most likely for a domestic emergency such as a Hurricane Katrina or Sandy type event. We could also be called upon during a terrorist attack or other catastrophic event. The key is that we are ready individually and collectively regardless of what type of event it is. Each and every one of us, our families and our employers, have to be prepared for this. For the individual soldier, this means that your equipment is clean, accounted for, and ready to go. It's packed at home or at the unit and is mission ready. It means that you are physically fit, mentally tough, and prepared to take on any task and work long hours in an austere environment. Our vehicles, our helicopters, generators, and all of our equipment have to be fully mission capable. When your unit gets the call to go, there will not be time to top off fuel tanks, find BII, or clean your weapons. When you park your vehicle at the end of drill or turn in your equipment at the end of a drill weekend, you have to make sure that equipment is at 1020 standards. It is mission ready. Mission-ready soldiers need mission-ready equipment and vice versa. Ready units 
start with ready soldiers. Don't fail your battle buddies, your unit, or the citizens of this state and this nation. Make sure that you and your equipment are ready to fight tonight. So fight tonight. The ability to respond with no notice when called. When you get that phone call that says, bring all your gear, show up at the armory to go do a mission that's unknown at this point, even the duration. Is your family prepared for that? Is your employer prepared for that? Are you and your equipment prepared for that? If you're prepared for that, then you're prepared for fight tonight. So from the strategic level, through the ATAG's imperatives, all the way down to what that means to you, it boils down to every one of us thinking with that mindset. Because when we don't, we break the trust of our citizens and we can never afford to do that. In conclusion, I'm gonna ask each one of you commanders, when you stop this video, take a few minutes, talk to your companies, troops, and batteries about what the theme Fight Tonight means to you. More importantly, how do you support the ATAG's imperatives, which in turn support the Adjutant General Strategic Plan? What does that mean for you as a company, troop, or battery? And what are the two most important measures that you need to work on to ensure that your organization is ready to fight tonight?